Hi guys. I'm at an undisclosed location. There's a reason why I can't tell you where I am. Because morels are highly sought after. If you happen to know where I am, please do not write it in the comments below. I would appreciate that. They're very hard to get and they're a lot of work and I don't want everybody showing up in different places where I go going after them. <laughs> and the black flies are really bad right now but I found a couple so I'll show them to you and you can see what they look like. Okay just a second. There's one. That's what they look like and when I pick them I pinch them off at the bottom. Some people use scissors. I just pinch them off, leave that because the mycelium is growing underground and I kind of shake them off and I blow them off. <laughs> I found another one over here. And what I'm going to do is the same process, is just pinch them off underground, like right at the bottom. <sighs> Blow as many blowers as I can out, I know that's kind of strange. And I have a mesh bag, it's kind of overkill because it's kind of a big bag, but I put them in here. Hoping that the uh, spores will drop out and go on the ground in other places. Holy cow, you got to look around because like... There's another one over there. Do you see it? Do ya? <laughs> okay, hang on. Guess I'll get this one too. Alright, we'll get back to you in a bit. Anyway, here's another one. Again, same process. Well, you never know, right? Wishful thinking. And there's a couple more there. And I'll get them too. I believe that this is wild oregano and I'm just gonna pick that and I'm just gonna rub it around my hairline, under my hat, on my ears, where the bugs really like to get. So hopefully that will help keep them away a little bit for now. There's also wild thyme here. This is wild thyme, which is really awesome if you were going to make cream of mushroom soup, such as spring surprise, which I make sometimes, or the uh, cream of mushroom soup with the morels. Can you see the black flies? They're just horrendous. This is a labor of love, I tell you, just to get enough for a feed. <laughs> Here's another one. There's quite a few. I've got quite a few so far. <sighs> yeah, no jokes. <laughs> and this is what my bag looks like so far. So I'm not doing too bad. I wanted to show you this here thing. You've probably seen them before. We call them a mullen. 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 Not really sure the pronunciation, but this is what they look out like when they start out. And the leaves, the leaves are very silky, something like lamb's ear, if you're familiar with that in your garden. But eventually they turn out to be like this. I use them in my Christmas flower arrangements. I spray paint them. Uh, traditionally, many, many, many years ago, they used them for candles. They just lit them on fire and they didn't last long but sometimes they would dip them in tallow and light them on fire and they'd be able to see in the bush for a while before the time of flashlights. I'm sure you're familiar with this. This is the tent caterpillar. This one's this nest is just starting but a wise lady told me once and I've been doing this for years in my garden if I happen to see them starting like that in the tent take tent and all with rubber gloves on and put them in hot water out of the tap in a bucket. They'll drown, that's it, and you don't have to spray any poisons. Good God, these black flies are bad. <laughs> anyway, helpful hint of the week.
this is kind of funny. Looks like somebody walked on this one, but it's still salvageable. Here's another nice specimen. <laughs> Here's one of those ones that uh, you almost step on because it's kind of camouflaged underneath. Probably just came up in the last couple days. Sideways, mind you, sideways. <laughs> but it is so hot out right now that I think it's really affecting the way they grow. I could be wrong, but if there's one, there may be more. Hey, great, the wind is getting up. That might help. <laughs> Holy lifted. Let's see if we can find some more. Here's a little birdie that has probably fallen out of the nest or is learning to fly. The mom. Hold on, I'll show you the mom. Can you hear the mom? It's pretty windy. I wonder what kind of egg that is. <laughs> now check that one out. It too seems to be going down on its side. Really strange. And here I thought people were walking on them. But you never know, right? There's a slug. See that? Just take him out of there. See him? <laughs> but that's okay. I still soak this in salt salted water when I get home. And it'll be totally salvageable. And a couple feet away, here's another one. It's crazy hot out right now. And the bugs are coming and going with the wind, but so far, I don't think anybody's bitten me. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next segment where I show you how to wash them and cook them. Hi guys. Welcome to my kitchen again. <laughs> okay, so the morels that I found, here's what I've got. Not a bad catch, really. I did have some of them in the paper bag, but uh, I went out a couple times. I had some in the fridge, so yeah. Mostly uh, yellow morel, obviously, but um, some of them are darker. You know, they could be called something different, such as bush morel, black morel. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to put some salt into the water and run it on lukewarm and then I'm going to put the morels in there. So, see you in a minute. Hi! So, now we put them in the uh, salted water, warm water and just swish them around for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to rinse them out, verb, check them all over, and uh, look for snails, slugs, spiders, ants, whatever. But you know what? I only ever once in a while have a slug. That's about it. Okay, so they're all washed and rinsed. And I wanted to show you this. Yeah, it looks a little far gone, but you know, I know the slugs ate at it, but I washed it off and everything. I didn't eat much, okay? <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to chop all these up. And the way to check that they're real uh, morels, one of the th ways is, they're hollow, okay? There's no chambers inside there, but if they were like hollowed and chambered, they would be false morels, which would be poisonous with a, um, a poison that's very similar to rocket poison, according to one of the books I read. So I'm going to slice them all lengthwise and put them in a cast iron pan with butter to cook. This butter, I think, is hot enough to this to go into when it's sizzling. And I've had it on about, I don't know, I had it higher, I had it at 8, but I've turned it down. I don't know, about there. We're going to let this cook for a while. 
And so we'll check on this in a little bit. So here's what they look like halfway through. You have to wait till that um, concentration of you know butter and moisture from the morels are boiled down a bit. So cast iron pan makes it the best though, eh? <laughs> about here you need to make a decision if you would like a little less moisture in that just keep cooking it or I think maybe I'm just going to turn that off right now and let the heat of the pan that's left cook it the rest of the way through maybe flip it once we're sure we're not sure yet but Johnny's outside and he's working on making us a steak we're gonna split so yeah we're gonna eat good tonight I got some thread and I got a needle and I ran the thread through this. So I'm going to hang it up now. Grab both ends and uh, hang it up. Look at that. Nice necklace, eh? That's a pretty cool necklace. <laughs> So this is what we're having. We're going to split this T-bone and have a uh, baked potato. John's cooked a few extra for breakfast. The morels we're going to have and salad. So that looks like a pretty good meal, huh? So anyway, uh, I decided to split it in thirds. We have a third that we're eating. We're saving this for breakfast. And this is what they look like when they're dehydrated. I'm keeping these. I'll just rehydrate them and cook them in the butter another time. So this is what you do with um, the morels. Just uh, string them on the thread and put it on a hanger and put that away in a dark um, ventilated area for a couple weeks. And then after that is done you can put them in the jar with a paper towel to take up some of the room as well as the moisture. <laughs> okay, and that's all ready for tomorrow to have in an omelette. Can't wait to get into that. Should be good. Johnny's a really good barbecuer. I highly recommend looking around in the spring. There's lots of different videos online that you can follow. I hope you really enjoy them like we do. Right, Johnny? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching.